Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. You're in the right place if you're an agent, a broker owner, or team leader, and you're looking to work smarter, not harder, and increase your average sale price. Again, our podcast is part of the Industry Syndicate. Check it out, the Industry Syndicate, where... Some of the best thought leaders all come into one place, and our podcasts are on their platform. Check it out. Again, I'm your host, Michael Lafito. If you have any questions about uh, today's show or a previous episode, or maybe you want to nominate somebody for our, our podcast, please send me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. And don't forget, if you're getting a nugget or two from our shows or a previous show, please leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher or on our Facebook page. Again, our book, Luxury Listing Specialist, we're getting some great feedback from it. If you haven't invested in it, check it out. It's on Amazon, Luxury Listing Specialist. Let's get right into today's show. I'm excited to have um, Paul Campano, who is with Keller Williams out of Boston. Um, Paul's doing some really great things. He came highly recommended to be um, a guest at my luxury live training in Boston uh, in the fall of 2019. And we we connected and we were able to finally um, tie him down to get him on our show. He's doing some amazing things out east. So, Paul, how are you doing today? Hey, Michael. Great to be here, man. Yeah, I really appreciate it. So, Paul has been licensed a little over, I think, 16 years. Him and I talked offline, doing over $20 million in volume while only selling between 30 and 40 units, and that's the key. You know, this is not the right show if you're looking to have, uh, you know, nuggets on how to list and sell, you know, two to 300 units a year at, at the entry level and starter price point. If you're looking to work smarter, not harder, and increase your average sale price and sell the same or less units and make a lot more money than you're in the right place. And one of the things that totally makes um, Paul unique is he's a marketer. He thinks outside the box. And one of those uh, ways he did that was uh, a unique video. So tell tell everybody about this uh, most interesting man video that you created. Give us a little background on that, would you, Paul? Yeah, many, many years ago, had a, uh, a really cool uh, loft. Uh, in the Boston area. And, uh, you know, we were sitting around and, and kind of getting ready to uh, put on the market. And I was sitting there with a client uh, who was a friend and, you know, just kind of talking over some ideas and kind of randomly he he brings up, he's like, you're sort of like that Dos Equis guy. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you know, you're the most in- interesting realtor in the world. And sort of like a light bulb went off in our head and said, okay, that, that needs to be what, what we do. So, you know, we used his loft as kind of the background for the video and then did a spoof on the Dos Equis commercial uh, starring me as the most interesting realtor in the world. Um, and, yeah, it took off. Um, people, I think people really got a kick out of it. I think it was a great way to, uh, you know, kind of product placement in a sense for the loft that really showed off uh, its uniqueness. Um, while also getting people to click and, 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 you know, want to learn more about it. Um, yeah, well, it was really well received, was blogged about by NAR. Um, you know, a lot of people that I don't even have never met in person when they meet me will bring up that video. And this is many years later. So definitely had some, some staying power. Uh, that's great. That's great. Doing something different and unique. 
Uh, many times we'll get, you know, the phone to ring and it's a big differentiator. We teach agents all the time. What's your unique value proposition? Why should somebody do business with you versus somebody else? You know, why should, you know, I, I'm thinking about hiring a Keller Williams agent. Paul, why should I hire you over another Keller Williams agent? So you need, you can't just let the unique value proposition be, you know, the, the brokerage. You, you as an agent need to, to know why somebody should, you know, work with you. The most listened to rate radio station, a potential seller when they're interviewing agents listens to is what's in it for me. All they care about is what are you going to do to get my home more exposure, get me top dollar with less aggravation so I can net more money. So, you know, creative outside the box, the most interesting man in the world. And you're going to share that link. So those of you that, um, you know, go to our, go to our podcast page, which is luxurylistingpodcast.com. And, and we're going to share that link in this episode. So take a look at it. And thanks for doing that, Paul. That's awesome. Absolutely. So one of the things that you're doing that's um, really, and this is, I'm always looking for voids when we bring on different guests for the podcast. So that's why if any of our listeners have a void or have a guest that they think would contribute, please share them. Again, Michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, Michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. But Paul, one of the things that uh, we're going to talk about next is, is, is a topic we really haven't had anybody on to talk about. And uh, so that's why I'm excited to, uh, to, to bring this in. So you've been working with a lot of athletes and celebrities and um, uh, you've helped Red Sox players and Celtic players and, and others. Mm -hmm. And um, talk, to, talk to me a little bit, you know, Again, don't share anything that you can't confidentially wise, sure. but but athletes that you've worked with have been talked about or in the press and the media that that's already well known that you feel comfortable sharing. Um, this is your chance to name drop some of those right now. Oh boy! Um, so I think here here's a good here's a good lesson about working with athletes. Discretion is key. Um, uh, both the players and usually the representatives don't appreciate name dropping. Um, I'm trying to think of people I've been, I've been seen with online that maybe I could drop. I mean, uh, it was, so one of the Celtics, uh, Javante green is a guy that I, I post a lot about. So that, I mean, I guess that's something one could probably just assume. Um, but yeah, I think one of the tough parts about working with this niche is that you get to do um, some really cool things with really cool uh, clientele that you can't, <laughs> in some cases, ever talk about. Um, yeah, leverage. You can't yeah. leverage. We talk about leverage all the time, right? Leverage is, but but with celebrities or high net worth individuals or trophy sales, um, yeah, discretion, confidentiality um, is really important. So that's why I preface it with that's kind of out there. It's well known because I certainly know there's big name folks that you can't discuss. And I, I totally appreciate that aspect. Right. I just, I think, you know, nobody wants to be one of the names that, that someone drops. Now that said, there still is a lot of leverage in a sense where once those types of clients and those agencies get to know that, hey, you know what, here's a guy that I can trust that, you know, he's going to work with my guy. And many times it's not just housing. It's really many of the needs the person will have in the city. Because, you know, especially in Boston, not many players originate from Massachusetts. So everything here is new to them. So not, not only can it be housing, but all of the things that surround their housing and kind of living needs. Um, so, you know, again, so, so the discretion piece of things um, ends up being key. But once they know that you are someone who is trustworthy, um, you know, they're very apt to come back to you uh -huh. uh, with other players. Uh, players talk about it in the locker room, believe it or not. Um, I've had a client from out of market, uh, was a pitcher for the Oakland days that, uh, you know, reached out and uh, we said, hey, I, you know, heard in the locker room that, that, that you're the guy that I should talk to. Uh, you know, here, here's what I need. Can you help me? I said, absolutely. Huh. And frankly, to this day, I don't know exactly what player or players uh, told him. And kind of crazy because he's on the West Coast. I'm on the East Coast. Um, but it's a pretty tight network. You know, you're talking about guys who are in a pretty small fraternity, uh, whatever sport it may be, doing what they do. Um, 
So they put a lot of trust into, you know, one another's recommendations Mm -hmm. on things like housing and finance. So it's a, it's It's a a very hard trust to earn. Yeah, Yeah. 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 And very easy to lose. Um, you know, if you kind of misstep. Hey there, it's Michael Lafito. Thanks again for listening to our podcast. If you are interested in signing up for our luxury listing specialist certification, or if you want additional information on how you can dominate selling higher end homes in your marketplace, make sure you go to luxurylistingspecialist.com. Yeah, that's a great point. One of the things we always talk about uh, when we're doing our live trainings, Paul, for our certification um, is the circle of trust, just like Robert De Niro in the movie Meet the Parents, right? So it's tough to penetrate that circle of trust. It's very easy to get kicked out of it. So you brought up a a couple of really good points there. Uh, So without, um, you know, name dropping, so to speak, talk to me a little bit about your... uh, of evolvement, for lack of a better term, um, how you how you broke into that sports and entertainment division. Yeah, I think at one point it was simply a you know just making kind of a conscious effort in in the fact that I you know had worked with unique uh, uh, high end properties um, that I did have you know college athletic background. I played baseball in college. Um, and I thought, well, look, you know, I sort of, I, I know their realm. I certainly sell properties uh, and market properties that they'd be inter- interested in. Why not try to, I'm going to kind of cater to, to those folks. So, you know, uh, it, it was a, uh, you know, slow evolution. It's one of those things like we talked about, you, you don't gain that trust overnight. Um, but I think like, like many things in, in real estate started with uh, one player and, you know, absolutely did an amazing job with him and then was able to leverage that, uh, you know, with his okay to, to, to say, hey, you know, I, geez, I just worked with so-and-so. Uh, we know we'd love to help you out. And, you know, over time that grows. And then, you know, once you're able to sort of start linking those associations with either the team or, okay, well, here's a guy that used to play in that city. Now that guy comes to your city you can leverage the fact that, oh, well, you know, I know you know Joe Smith. Yeah, helped him out. He was real happy. And those, again, that, that circle of trust, as you mentioned, those recommendations carry um, so much weight. You know, once you're able to start using those, um, you know, it's really kind of a game changer. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And we were talking a little bit offline. I think it's uh, naturally just like anything. If you have an interest or you're passionate about something, um, there might be that synergy um, even more so. So you're a sports, you know, guy, if you will. You 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 know, you you like your your sports teams, and um, so that that probably helps, right? You're you're you're, you're visual. You're at these events, um, and yeah, that, that helps. That that can't I think it helps. Can't I hurt think, the cause. You know, doesn't hurt the cause you know and i think everybody i think anybody that works with athletes has their own uh kind of like you said kind of unique value proposition um and and, and connection you know i know one agent uh who's older uh who is sort of more of almost like the uh the the mom or grandma role like she's she really helps out with the little kids and she'll even like nanny them once in a while uh and really in tune with kind of that side of things um, you know, I think I'm a guy that I like, I like sneakers. I'm, I'm a little bit of a sneaker head, uh, as are a lot of the guys. So kind of one of the things we sometimes bond over is sneakers. Uh, you know, we all have kind of a love for, for those and, uh, streetwear, which, you know, I think once, once they kind of see that, oh, this guy sort of into what I like, and, you know, you can talk about those things at a high level. Um, you know, it, it's a really good way to, to build rapport um, and, and, you know, kind of build a relationship from there. Huh. Great advice. Um, so you talk, uh, you talk a lot about um, outside the box um, and you shared the most interesting uh, man, uh, man in real estate video that um, with us. Can you talk to us about some other marketing creative sure. things that uh, maybe you've done, whether it be working with buyers, sellers, you mm-hmm. know, you do a lot of condos in Boston, although you also work the Cambridge area and some other areas. Um, and, and anything from uh, actual marketing of a property or, or yeah. lead generation um, standpoint? 
yeah, so I had a very cool, uh, very cool loft condo uh, on the waterfront in Boston. Um, kind of the way it was built, there really was no um, frontage to put a tra- you know traditional sign. Um, you know, it was kind of a boutique building, um, and really no way to put a sign on the property itself because the facade was very angular uh, and very contemporary. So, how, what do you do? How do you how do you let people know that there's a really amazing unit in this building? That's actually for sale. Uh, so I worked with a street artist uh, that I'm, I'm friendly with in Boston. Uh, he does amazing work. Um, I got him to, on the sidewalk and street just outside of the building, do a really awesome uh, contemporary-looking modern uh, chalk sign on the ground. That uh, condo for sale had my info had my little tagline, better call Paul. Um, and I'll say this, it was probably 80, 20. Most people loved it. Uh, I think there were a few neighbors that probably weren't super happy with me. Um, I think partly because they thought it was spray paint and it wasn't, it was actually spray chalk. It washes away after a week or two. Okay. Um, but again, I think, you know, to your point, you know, sellers feel like, especially nowadays, right? There's a hundred different choices for realtors and agencies and, I feel like in my market, you know, every third person you meet is a realtor. What is this person going to do for me? What are they doing specifically to help my property? So I think when you do things like this, it really makes those people understand, all right, you know, this person is looking out for my specific property and really creating, um, you know, some, some unique strategies. Uh, you know, and again, I'm sure we all have high level strategies for properties, but he's really sitting down and focusing on my unit. Um, yeah, and sellers loved it. Uh, sold in the first weekend uh, over ask. Uh, it wasn't a low price point, um, you know, for that market. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, it's one of those things where you have to, you know, you can only use what you have to work with. And in my mm-hmm. case, it was have no frontage, don't have, have a facade to work with. What can I do that's contextual that kind of vibes with, this condo and would also appeal to the demographic of buyer who would buy this condo. Yeah, that that's key there, folks. Uh, I, I want to repeat what Paul just mentioned, um, figuring out who the demographic, who your avatar, who your potential buyer is, whether it be your con- a condo you represent, a multifamily, a single family, you know, trying to figure that out and then showcase the best features of that property and mm-hmm. through and tagging them and your description and everything else so that you know the the, the antenna you know your your property is seen more eyeball traffic that's the key you want more eyeball traffic the more eyeball traffic the more high, high, higher probability that you get qualified buyers through the properties you represent yeah i think you you touched on it it's really you know one of my mantras is always you know if you mar- marketing to everybody is marketing to nobody I really feel like you, like you said, you need to figure out who your demographic is, who the most likely buyer is, you know, and really tailoring, you know, those strategies to that buyer. Yeah, oh, that's that's great. That's great. Talk, talk to me about I, I'm, I'm an agent uh, and I have a referral in Boston. Uh, Paul, what, what's the best way for somebody to get in touch with you? Uh, probably either email or phone. Uh, email is paul, P-A-U-L, at isellyourhome.com. Or uh, my That's cell a great is URL, six, by the way, isellyourhome.com. Yeah, bought that a long time ago. Long time ago. you did. Um, yes. Always felt like, you know, your marketing should represent what you do. And luckily, you know, 17, 18 years ago, that happened to be available. And I thought, okay, you know, in the simplest terms, what do I do? I sell your home. And it was available. So, uh, you know, it was fortunate to lock it down. Um, so, yeah, so either either Paul at isellyourhome.com or our cell phone is 617-304-3686. Awesome. Hey, listen, I really appreciate your time today, Paul. Keep raising the bar in real estate and, um, you know, 
I just, uh, again, really appreciate you sharing those nuggets as far as, you know, the most interesting man and how you got into sports and entertainment. So thank you again. Absolutely, Michael. Thanks for having me. Again, just a reminder, any email, uh, send me an email if you have any questions at all, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. 2020, we're releasing one podcast a week for each month. So again, if you haven't uh, listened to all the the episodes go back. There's some great content out there. And our new websites, we just launched them. Check it out. Check out LuxuryListingSpecialist.com, LuxuryListingSpecialist.com. You can see my upcoming events where I'll be speaking, tons of information, and uh, there's some great free content on there. Again, check it out, LuxuryListingSpecialist.com. My name is Michael Lafito. Continue to raise the bar and prove others wrong. Take care, folks.